Aim. Minus one, minus one, draw a card for four. Uh, Blood Aura. Uh, uh, did it always void him? This is completely different. They dramatically changed Blood Aura. Before it was... Oh, there goes my phone. Uh, target troop gets permanent uh, plus one, plus one, I think. And uh, it could not be blocked except by Blood and Artifact troops. So now it's a completely new card. All right, so in this yeah. case, it's uh, if it is dealt damage and would die, or this turn would die, void it instead. So if it deals so damage to a target care, and it dies, it voids. Yeah, it takes care of the, the Warlock Inquisitor that when it died, it returns to your hand. Uh, now instead, it is voided. Which is, I, I believe it's called the Zentoth's Inquisitor now, but that's that's basically, it's a, it's a good effect. Uh, I don't know how I feel about it on an aura, but it's a good effect. Yeah, before, I would have taken this all the time. Like, the old Blood Aura, where it made it not able to be blocked. Like, I was excited about playing Blood Wild uh, in in Draft, at least, mm -hmm. where you're just taking a, a ton of blood, Briar Legions, and then you have, like, a 5-5 five, five Briar Legion. On turn 6, you buff it up, and or even on turn 5, the turn you play it, you buff it up, and, and now it's very, very hard to block, and just sing, swing in for all kinds of damage. Uh, blood Aura, I, I, it definitely got nerfed. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think there might be a way to uh, turn this into an interesting combat trick at some point, but I'm going to have to think about it, and it may take a set or two before this becomes uh, constructed usable. So, I mean, voiding cards is strong. I'm not going to say that it's a terrible card that you'll never want to play, but it was definitely stronger before. Okay, so so say you're talking like this is not a terrible card you never want to play. You're saying like maybe maybe once in a while this becomes good. It doesn't have to. I I was just looking at it the first time I read it. I thought it said mm -hmm. fatal damage. It's just Correct. any damage. Yes. So if you're playing with that like that Robomancer, no, that's not what it's called. Whatever the red guy is that taps to do damage to target uh, mm -hmm. trooper player, like then all of a sudden he just he taps to void something. The uh, one out, and it's also in the turn that this is done. What I think might be fun to use, and I don't think there's all the cards in there yet, is to put this on a card that can pink for small damage. So the idea is, is that let's say that you can wipe most of the board, but they have some wicked recursion going on. Well, then if you can put the effect that when they die on and then do a mass removal, I think that's when I can see this being a little even a little bit better tossing those cards into the void instead of them going into the discard but it's uh, the idea seems a little janky to me still it's not hitting me as something that I would want for more than you know that plus one plus one and void something crazy card but you know for all I know it could be like super amazing for uh, orc rage decks I mean, I, I do not doubt that there will be some use to that card. Like I said, it, it was definitely much better before. Uh, yeah, it's the good evasion, the evasion was so good. Yeah, well, I mean, Blood Barrier is pretty simple. I think we can just move on. Yeah. Uh, Blood, Blood Barrier, I mean, it has some interesting effects, but... Oh my goodness, um, Blood Cauldron Ritualist looks so much more badass. That's an I, awesome one. I really liked the Blood Cauldron Ritualist. Corey hated it. We talked about this at Dragon Con a little bit. Mm -hmm. he, did, he was not happy with that that Blood Cauldron Ritualist at all. I, I thought it was a little jokey, but I enjoyed the jokiness. He wanted mm -hmm. something much more serious, and was... I definitely think this accomplishes it. Which is right. the one before? It was like holding a doll or something? Yeah, no, it was no, holding, it was holding a, another a shit here by the ears. above a cauldron, and it had like a, a dagger against its throat. Uh, no, I think it had a dagger going through it. it Maybe. I remember oh, yeah, it one did, it stabbing through. It. Yeah. yeah, that's right. So it was a... Uh... Uh, to me, I this is definitely it. a lot more serious. It is definitely more yeah. in theme with what he wanted. This guy looks yeah. really mean. Like yeah. I would not want to mess with that rabbit. I mean, you know, a three for five, five after sacking another troop. Yeah, uh, I think that's kind of that's kind of interesting, right there. Well, it 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 becomes four four. It's not plus four plus four. Oh, so it's still four four. I'll find a way to turn it into a five five just to make myself right. But but correct me if I'm wrong, Queer. Like at Gen Con. This card, even though it said the same text as it currently does, it was a little bugged that every time you sack something, it got actually plus four, plus four, right? That, that's because the original card text was that it grew, and they nerfed it right before Gen Con, and they didn't have it fully changed. I'm that's pretty I sure. So this this ha this card has been nerfed before, but it ha it is not being nerfed right now. 
Let's see. Then we have Blood Servant. A three threshold, two cost. Gets plus one, plus one that turn. So, people in chat, horrible? like, what what do you guys think about this card? Because I, I don't see myself pretty much ever playing it. Even I mean, in limited, it's a limited card. Like, you're not going to play it in constructed. But what I'm, I'm kind of curious. So, Blood Savant, like... Blood Savant. When, when would you play it? I... I just don't see myself taking it very highly. Like I see it a very, very late pick for for draft. Uh, I agree. I I think uh, I I don't think I would play. I mean, it's it's a new card. I haven't really thought about it, but two cost for a two cost plus one plus one this turn is not good for me. I mean, because it's going to be what a two three on turn three at best. And that's making sure that you also drop the uh, the other blood shard for it. My for my biggest problem is that then like if you're playing a, like if you're trying to pump it, you're just not doing anything else on your turn. Like you're mm -hmm. you're holding back mana for the chance of being able to pump them. Like and your opponent's not going to play into that. And and if your opponent knows what they're doing, and it just like it like what this card. I I guess this is a card that shows people like that you know some effects are not good effects it's a trainer card that's what i look at it as it's it, it's the card it's you get in your starter artifact. deck to figure out how to play it since it's a blood or artifact it has the automatic ability of it can block troops that can only be blocked by blood or artifacts so it's got that going for it so yeah, well, it's a splash oh, okay, sure, sideboard but, but when is that relevant now that blood over was changed yeah that's a good point all right uh bolt palm wizard all right so this one, the first time this was seen is during Gen Con when it came out uh, in that Shin Hair fight, right? Uh, yes, this was this was one of my spoils. Uh, I really like it a lot. That could be because it was one of my spoils, or it could be because of some of the funny tricks that I think that it will play that I'm looking forward to playing on people. Well, that looks like a revert target troop. If that changes transformations, then that's going to uh, definitely kill some transcended yes. decks. That does. That will take a transcended to back to the aspirant, whatever the first stage is. It turns. Is any it all the way back, back to the first stage? Played. Wow. Yes, any card to the original card text that it was played as. So, so it's, it's it's basically like what it came into play as. The uh, if that's, well, I don't know if that's true because if it's revert, a lot of those are permanent, so they could have been to the deck, come back out, that kind of thing. Yes, sure. Uh, sure. It reverts all that stuff it, it, to original card text. That's. The uh, uh, the this original is the, card. This is the first revert we've seen so far. Uh, that might be really nice. All I don't right. know if its so, cost is justified though. Yeah, it, it reverts rage. It reverts transformation. It, it is a great card. I really like it just because it shuts down so many different things. But also, it enables some very interesting effects that I find to be very uh, powerful. I I would think, but. I'm obviously being vague about those things. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, well, I won't... Here's, Here. here's the one I want to know. Is what does this do to a Mushwaki? Does it just kill it? Turn to uh, zero, if zero. the Mushwaki's original zero, 0 yes, it would just kill it, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's to the Mushwaki. <laughs> like, I think it's funny that, that that second effect is on there. Target champion yeah. bears the top card of the deck. Like, why is that even on there? Um, I guess maybe to give it some mill option. Maybe they thought, you know, forcing sacrifice was just it wanted more. I mean, plus plus you're going to be sacrificing a lot of troops with with a blood shin hair deck. Mm -hmm. Uh add that with the the guy that's probably going to come up soon, the samurai guy that yeah. gets the two yeah. counters to increase. I mean, I really, there's a lot of synergy with sacrificing in shin hair blood and I like it a lot. I just wish this guy wasn't a five cost. I wish it was like four. Like uh, he is. He is on the expensive high. side. But I mean, revert is such a strong. I mean, you have to consider. I mean, sure. Basically, any any time in Magic when you would want to get rid of an effect, you would bounce it to someone's hand, and they would replay it again. It would be the same. That doesn't work in Hex. So basically, you have to have revert to get rid of those costs. And this is a this is a basically infinite use revert. Which is just crazy strong. Yeah, yeah I guess sure. when you put in a, a concubunny, so with the concubunny in there, pay one, create your sacrificial troop, sack your troop, revert a troop. So, a kind of roundabout one cost for it. 
Well, right, I guess and, we'll and, get to and the mushwalkies soon You add the, add the Bloodbearer in, which is giving you one health every time you sack a troop. I mm -hmm. mean, a lot of people aren't too keen on the Bloodbearer, but, I mean, it really enables some of these sacrifice decks, in my opinion. All right, so uh, I, I made that mushwalkie comment earlier about whether it was a 0 0 or a 1 1. Somebody was saying in chat, did they change it? Uh, maybe it was a 1 1 originally, and I missed it, which I think it was. Maybe, maybe I was just wrong there. But uh, Mushwaki is missing from our uh, spoiler with the PDF, so we will uh, not it, know. It was a 1-1, one, one, so I don't know whether it will be a 0-0, zero, zero, but it was a 1-1. One, one. So this would not kill it. It would just make it a 1-1 one, one sure. Mushwaki, which can't be increased. So <laughs> Poor thing. All right. It's yeah. as good as dead. Let's move on yeah, to the, it's as good as dead. the next guys here. We have a 3-for-3-2 three three Blood Creeper Venom Rogue. So and, his name was changed. Yeah, and this is the Spider Spawn guy. Yeah, it, it was called whatever it was before. I don't know what it was called before. <laughs> Good call. It wasn't yeah. called whatever it was before. Wasn't that yeah, uh, wasn't went... that one of the named guys and he was unique? No, no. You're thinking Zarlox. Okay. Cruel Webcrawler. There, thank you. At least there's people in chat who know what they're talking about, yes. unlike us. <laughs> so, yeah, he's not bad. I would bad. like to point out, he's Clan Blackblade. That's why he knows things. <laughs> so, well, there we well, go. Well played. Let's see... And then we've got Call of the Grave, basic action, target troop from the graveyard into your hand. So I've, I've talked to a lot of people about this card. Maybe we were just like drafting in the, the TCG, uh, TCG browser uh, simulator or something, and people um, really valued this card highly. I, I don't. I actually don't think this is as good as most of the people I've talked to. I'm trying to look up Spider Spawn. I don't remember what it says. Was it like a 2-2 two, two or something like that? I think it's a 2-1. Yeah, it's one. a 2-1. Two, 2-1, one. Two, one. yeah. Oh, it's from a graveyard. So what are they? the reason they're liking it is because you can pull from your opponent's graveyard as well. No. Oh, you're talking Call of the Grave? Yeah, Call of the, the Grave is good. But on, So just real quick on Broodkeeper, the reason I don't think it's good is because, like, at least in Constructed, the... The f set one seems very three drop centric, and this is not strong, like compared to the rest of the three drops, which are ridiculous. And then the other one is in limited, like it's an uncommon. I might take it if I wanted a three two for three, but a lot of the time it's just not going to connect. Your opponent's going to block it and stop you from getting a spider spawn. And even if you do get one, like getting a two one isn't the most amazing thing in the world. Yeah, it's a, uh, and to respond, it's a, uh... To Hex Informer, it is uh, myself, Mokog, uh, Function Fails, and Gawair. So, uh, Gawair is from Clan Blackblade. Fantastic guild up there. Uh, active on the forums. Great guy in general. Uh, he's helping out across the community more above and beyond uh, than some of us. Uh, and then we all know Function. Crazy Mohawk man. Uh, just, you know... I, I can't say enough good about both of these guys. I'm very glad to have them chatting with me, uh, dealing with the set, that we could pull this all together in one night has actually been fantastic. So I just want to say thank you guys. I know I haven't said it yet, but y'all are doing a, a, an absolute solid, especially going through every one of these. I know we're all kind of waiting for everyone to get their invites, and it's all up in the air, but... Uh, y'all are great guys. Y'all are very knowledgeable. Y'all bring great backgrounds from Magic the Gathering and a lot of previous play experiences. Uh, and it really rounds out my knowledge, and I learn a lot from y'all, so I know a lot of people can learn even more from y'all than I can. Uh, and I I got so much I've got left to learn still. Uh, it's, uh, it's an honor to have y'all with us, and I am very, very glad. Oh, glad to be here, man. It's been a lot of fun so far. Yeah, I mean, it, it, like like you were really saying, like I'm always looking for a distraction to keep me me from actually making con <laughs> content and doing something productive. So, uh, you know, this is a good distraction from that, and it's definitely a good way to pass the time because I think right now I would just be hitting the refresh button constantly, and uh, <laughs> and and I would be driving myself insane. My wife would get home and she's like, "What did you do today?" I was like, uh, "I well, I probably hit the refresh button five thousand times." <laughs> well, and. To, to move on to our next one before we scroll down, we've got the the carry news, which was recently recently spoiled as well. Did you like that segue? Sorry, I'm still on this conction note. You guys can start. <laughs> conction? 
<laughs> yeah, I saw that. I guess that's uh, my bad pronunciation. I do apologize. I'm from Texas. We like to talk with slang, y'all. It's all good. I, I, I say things a little weird from time to time. Well, I'm from the Bay, so I, I guess I got, I got nothing. Well, I, I do have quite a bit on you on that note, too. We, we both got it going. But, like, yeah, I was going to say Cumption. I think he's he's probably a bad a bad driver. Don't know why. I just I just picture it. That's how you feel Cumption should be. Yeah, he, he like, he he can't stay in his lane. Mainly you know what I hate? Like... Since we're talking about you, you know what I hate the most about you and your name that? is that now every time I need to spell function, I almost <laughs> always misspell it. That yeah. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, I, I've seen a lot of people just spell it with a C when they were referring to me, but then to know that I was making you misspell the actual spelling of function yeah. makes me really happy. It's like I, I go, I type the word, and I'm like, God dang it, all right, and I go back and I correct it because I know it's wrong. It's obviously wrong, but yes, all the time. Every time I've had to type function since I've met you, I've misspelled the word first. Yeah, that, that's awesome. That, Like I said, that makes me happy inside. Yeah, yeah. All right, ca carry news. Yeah, yeah, I think it's business. not great. Uh, I mean, it, it, three for two two, with some graveyard removal. I mean, it, graveyard removal is nice if you're playing a deck that interfaces with their graveyard, but most of the time you're not. I think it's uh, it's going to be fourth cyborg, depending on how the meta game turns out. That's what I think about it. It's uh, because a three for two two that shuts down a predominant meta game combo deck or a metagame recursion deck is going to get played, but I think it's a very metagame dependent card, and I don't see picking it up in draft super often, because you're not going to get all of those janky combos and weird things going on as readily. You know what I just yeah. noticed on this one, and this is like has nothing to do with if the card's good or not, they need to make a change to this card. It's the only card that says remove from the game. Like it just needs to, they need to change it to void. Yeah, actually, someone else noticed that the other day, too. I, I don't know if... I'm sure that that's um, an oversight on their part, yeah. It may yeah. be oversight, but, you know, they've really talked about zones, and it looks as though that they've tried to have the Void be its own sort of zone. So, well, if it's oversight, it's oversight. Well, the RFG zone. I mean, that's yeah, they're the yeah. same zone, generally. Yeah, generally. I think I, they should go back and change this, because it just seems inconsistent. Well, uh, let's... Did did we even talk about Call of the Grave? I, I no, John, we didn't. We, no, John I, was saying we, it's insane. I agree with him completely. You know what's really insane about Call of the Grave is it's actually kind of good and limited. Normally, effects like this are terrible, but the fact that you can get back your Briar Legion and uh, it basically becomes another copy of Briar Briar Legion is uh, yeah, I'll do that all day long. Yeah, the the issue with it is it doesn't change threshold costs. So if you're not in the color that you're against you don't want to take someone else's graveyard stuff but it is very good for getting your briar legion back that's very true yes but yeah the fact that it's any graveyard is pretty nice all right but uh we we're gonna move on so let's yes. let's talk about some more ones claw of the molten god a three for five four At the start of your turn deals two damage to you i like the buff they did to this guy uh i, I would think play him they pushed him they definitely pushed him well, they they basically changed his name to a different card and then made a new card because the old one was what Throat Cutter is now, right? Mm -hmm. So, and then this new one's a completely new card. That's fair. I like him better. Yeah, I, I it like for three, you play this yeah. on turn three, like your opponent has to deal with it. If they're a slow deck, like they're gonna have to find something to remove it. They can't just let you start. Like the two damage becomes pretty irrelevant because you know if. Oh yeah, I'll pay two it, life to get, keep get this guy in play. In. I'm not going to trade off. I'll pay two damage per for the next four turns to deal 20 damage to their champion. Well worth the two uh, two life in my opinion. Oh man. Yeah, it's it's definitely like a risk versus reward card, but uh, but yeah, so. Uh, here's one. So, which of these two do you take? Claw the Mountain God, pack one, or pick one, or Corrupt Harvester? Well, I mean, then again, we're coming back into the situation, it's like two really strong blood cards. If there's another mm -hmm. really strong card from a different color, you might take that and try to cut it, and let your like two opponents to the left fight over blood. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's, that's the side note. 
I mean, like, I would love to have two. I would love to have both of these cards. Uh, if I had to pick one, that's that's really hard. Uh, if I, I mean, three is a, a very heavy slot. Uh, I'm more likely to be able to pick up a good three slot than than necessarily him. So I probably would lean towards the corrupted harvester. I like the evasion. I like the life drain. He's a very good card. Well, the he, evasion got the even better. Situation. So because they changed blood aura. Uh, that type of evasion, artifact troops or blood troops, is so much more rare now. So, yeah. if I wanted to win the draft, Corrupt Harvester. If I wanted to win at life, Claw of the Mountain God. Because I see this Claw. guy being focused on some, like, blood aggro decks that I haven't even thought of yet. Yeah, I... I, I would value pick I think... the, the Claw of the Mountain God before the Corrupt Harvester. I'd play him, and then I'd be like, man, that Corrupt Harvester would have won me this game, but my Claw of the Mountain God's going to sell for 20 Platinum, so... No, if, if we're going to talk about value picking, I don't see Claw being being a value card. And the reason is because, like, at the 3-drop slot, having 2 Threshold kind of holds it back a little bit, so it's going to fit into fewer decks. And so it's going to have to be in a, a Heavily Blood Splashing X or just Pure Blood. And so if, if you're just talking about value, like, the number of decks it fits into are very limited and really it's only one because it's going to be those heavily aggressive decks that are going to be able to take advantage of them on the value end i he's not the value card i want but if if you're taking the two i think in the race situation corrupt harvester is going to win a majority of the time because you know the claws mm -hmm. also doing damage to yourself so that kind of counteracts that a little bit maybe well and the other part that it will matter when it comes to like when you're doing that that value in the rare drafting is you know there are going to be a lot more corrupt harvesters in the environment, so automatically the Claw of the Mountain God being a good three-drop rare, it's, you know, for the block, he's sure. going to find his home, and then he's going to wreck face in his home. Uh, yeah, yeah. And because of that, the more that I can pick up during set one to when in set two they break him, or they make him even more awesome, you know, pick this guy up early, you know, after you've got your four rare draft him when you don't have corrupt harvester to choose against him and just go for it so real quick while we're saying it works good with endbringer i want to uh you guys can keep going but i'm going to look down there's a card that uh when an orc does damage to a player you zoltog. uh yeah zoltog yeah, so it, it actually works well with zoltog you get a free two one out of it which is kind of cool but i mean that honestly to me that feels more like a, a Zoltog quote, win, is win not win. in this document so we don't know what's going on with him oh man I bet he uh, he probably broke the system a little bit but we're going to go ahead and, and take a look at uh, corrupted, corrupted life afterlife. because we know we know harvester's cool we love harvester uh, but corrupted afterlife so revert and transform up to three target troops in a graveyard into zombies and put them into play under your control I kind of like that guy. He's expensive, but I like him. So he, it, it's really like three two ones for th three, and and then it's very situational. You're not always going to be readily accessible to those three cards. Yeah, I don't, I don't particularly like this card. Just, uh, I mean, it's it's too expensive, honestly, for what you're getting. But that's just me. I mean, it's a fun card. It's an interesting card. I like that this card exists, but I don't know that I would take it. I like it because you can target your opponent's graveyard. Oh, uh, that's true. I mean, you could, yeah. I, you could I take like that. opponent's I, cards. That's... I like that part right there because getting in there, targeting their stuff, if they're running like a diamond recursion deck, you're like, yeah, I, I stole it. What you going to do? The zombies now. Yeah. Or See, the can, part where, uh, where... drop this with Urnaz. So, you know, Urnaz just hit you, you top deck or corrupted afterlife. Oh, I'm going to Corrupted Afterlife, and I'm going to put in three two two or three two cost guys because I think that's the cost on Zombie, and then I'll mill you for six, and then I took away your Graveyard Recursion. Have a good day, guys. No, I here here's my argument against that is that generally Graveyard Recursion decks operate on a lower end of the curve, and by the time you're playing a six cost card, if you're trying to counteract their Graveyard Recursion, why aren't you just playing Call to the Grave? Yeah, and instead of Graveyard Recursion, what I think this and the Ooze guy are better at dealing with mm -hmm. is Inspire decks that use the Graveyard Inspire All Your Trips. You can take out like their 16-0 Sword Trainer that's buffing every single one of their cards by 16 damage, and you can just eat those. 
Sure. And, and that's going to happen more often, I think, than having to deal with graveyard recursion. Mm -hmm. But but still, for for six cost, I mean, that's about when you would want to be playing that card because they're just getting their their graveyard enchantment out, and you could just take care, or you could play a two cost enchantment destruction and, and get rid of it or a three cost to destroy all enchantments uh, and gain two life go. while you're at it and gain two life while you're at it so right. yeah there you go Let, let's move on to the next one uh, yeah I think that, that one's a miss for me on Afterlife it's got flavor it's got zombie flavor but three for three two dark spire enforcer its name was changed it used to be death dealer simple card no text yeah, uh, but it's, yeah, it's just another body. I like the picture. It's it's good art. I agree. Then, uh, but then again, I like you guys don't know me very well. I like any any picture that involves a female chest region of any race. So, like, there you okay, go. Okay, if if we're gonna analyze the art here, like, on the left, well, I guess it's from it where it's standing. Its left side like covers a lot of the boob area, but mm -hmm. the right side is just like one leather strip, like. Yeah, who yeah who, for it. Yeah, who designed this? Like this, I don't. It's not a dress. Who designed this garment? Like it whoever they are, they designed cover, it for me. It's not sy <laughs> symmetrical though. It's, you would lose in the arena to this. I, I don't care about symmetry very much. Like okay, and then when we're gonna talk about it, like how is it possibly swinging this uh, flail in such a way that it it's like makes like it's obviously a magic flail. Look at it. It's magical. It moves however it wants. She's just trying to let it not get away. It, this is too much like uh what's that soul something that fighting game soul caliber yeah soul caliber. it's, it's, a, soul it's caliber a little soul caliber but but you know what the orcs play up the crowd in the arena that outfit plays up the crowd that weapon plays up the crowd and sh they do it for three resources yeah i the art that not happening for me like <laughs> where, where's the blood coming from that it's splattering in I just, behind her and in front of I her? have to point out since since I mentioned boobs we have gained two people watching okay. the stream oh we man we need wards with boobs we gotta hurry up and get to like what's the next card with boobs I don't, we got a lot of exactly. cards we'll you know, get down there they're coming yeah alright okay. so Demented um, Demolisher a 5 for 3 he's fantastic three. I oh, love him wait a second extinction was changed and this is a dramatic this is a huge change We'll get, we're almost changed. there. We're not there yet. Calm, calm. Oh, here. oh, sorry. Calm I, I, yeah, was, I moved down. Okay. Demented okay. Demolisher. No, Demented Demolisher. I got so He's a goblin. Demented Demolisher. Andrew's play. Void all resources okay. from your deck. You know, we were talking about this uh, a little bit before the stream started, sure. and uh, y'all mentioned one really cool thing I hadn't thought of, and it was the uh, the thinning that occurs from your deck from this. Yes, I think that is an amazing deck thinner. Once you get your resources out, all the resources you want, you play this guy. It doesn't matter if he's crap. You will never draw another resource. You always you have no dead resource draws. Uh, I I like it. I like it just for that. I would actually run more resources in a deck with him, and just play him and thin down to a significantly smaller deck, like all a thirty right. card so, deck or something. So, he's fantastic. So here we go. Here's the deck. It's uh, four rage fire. For Demented Demolisher, uh, all and, resources and afterwards. All resources. Yep. Done. And then you just I mulligan again to that. make sure you get those uh, enough to play them. Yeah, yeah, I would play that. Oh man, so, you gotta actually. I'm taking is, notes on that one. Yeah, he's he's uh, amazing. I love him. Everyone else should love him too. He's uh, he's phenomenal. I like he's one of the only goblins we had spoiled. That's true. Yeah, I think I I mean they haven't really talked about goblins as a race, like how they fit into the the hex lore, but uh, there's one of them, and they're, he they're in the he other has world. a red That's... hand and a, and a and a purple hand. All right, so all right, he's awesome. Get him, draft yeah. him, rare draft him, love him. Uh, yeah, he's, so he's on, fantastic. Move the, on the to determined to make, on... zombie. The art was changed and the name was changed. A determined zombie versus mangled zombie. I mean. Just because he's determined, he's that much more likely to uh, to kill your opponent, right? Well, I guess so. Yeah, it, two for two. It's one. the reason he's why terrible. he's got he's two attack. <laughs> like the the flavor text on this is what gets me. Like, why did they even include it? it, it it's like a death is no deterrent. You know, it, like that was because he's it, determined. It, it just, it, it he's determined, so obviously. Well, now one thing to remember <laughs> like, is uh, they have a few mentions in the lore about flaming zombies. Or uh, flaming necrotic. So one arm thing... two attack. <laughs> one arm two attack. Point. Yeah, there you go. So I guess my problem with uh, determined zombie is I'm not convinced that he's determined enough. Yeah, it's true. 
You know well, what? He's got. He's You're missing right. an arm. I, I gotta he's still going with one arm. Like he's got to be pretty determined. That's but, uh -huh. he's also he's got an arrow like, in him. Yeah. I mean, I, come on. He's I'm, he's I'm obviously determined. No. Although I hate no. that you made me. I hate that you made me read his flavor text because then I read the flavor text on the Demented Demolisher. It says the de the necrotic did not even bother trying to recruit the goblins for the underworld, knowing them to be far too deranged. See and. And the entire the entire awesome thing about the necrotic is that they convinced the dwarves who are incredibly ridiculously deranged to join them. So, so I I have a flavor issue right now, thanks you know, to you. I, I have a flavor issue. That means they need to create a third the a third faction of the goblins. Like the goblins need to have a faction. If they're not deranged enough or if they're too deranged to be in the underworld and they're obviously evil, like the guy doesn't look nice. Mm -hmm. Like what what's his faction then? He, well, at the moment, he's factionless. Neutral. He's neutral, apparently. And yeah. so is okay, a zombie. Let's move, let's yeah, move let's on. Move on. Oh, let's All right, move on. so Endbringer, uh, he was one of the cards that was uh, played in the stream. A five for yeah, four. Yeah, that was spoiled before. It's it's very strong. Uh, well, okay, I say very strong. It's really good if you have two champions below 10 health. Then it's ridiculously strong. Otherwise, it's it's all right. Yeah, uh, it'll accelerate the end of a at the end of a game for sure. Uh, would y'all uh, drop this as a limited bomb, hundred percent of the time? As a as a what? Would y'all draft this as a, a bomb, hundred percent of the time, and limited? As a bomb? I don't I don't know if I'd say bomb. It's good, but like, you definitely have to pick up the orcs. Like, I guess the question is, what am I picking it over? Mm -hmm. Like, it's good. I'd probably take it a lot of the time. Uh, okay, so here's the question: Do you take this or do you take Boulder Brute? Uh, probably Boulder Brute, just for the yeah. versatility. I'm a big on versatility. Like, I'm huge on versatility, and, and Boulder Brute definitely has it over this guy. Yeah. Uh, I, again, I think I'm with you, I'd, so. I'd rare draft and bringer, but I would, if I wanted to win, I'd take Boulder Brute. So they changed Extinction to a four cost. Yeah. Insane. Destroy all troops. I, which, I think they should have left it as five. That is quite strong. I don't. I wonder what Judgment is still. We'll have to see when so, we get there. So bonkers. Like, them changing this to four uh well we were saying the what was my guy that i'm really excited about like brave howler mm -hmm. was was a game Howling changer brave. this this being a four cost is a game changer as well i agree it's, yeah. it's blood very hits fast. Uh, four resources and two threshold and you're like oh my goodness when are they going to extinction me but on the other hand on the other hand i think that this will be a noob trap for people because i think a lot of people are going to play this right off and most of the big stuff is going to come out turn five or six. They're going to be playing this like one turn early, I think. For too noobs, often, yeah. maybe. If well, if they need to. Well, I mean, and the, the other part the is, veterans are going to play. You know, it's going to. to help also uh, stave off that early aggro. You know, when someone goes, you know, turn one drop Fang of the Mountain God, and then turn two Blood Harbinger, and turn three Claw of the Mountain God. You know, on turn four, you're going to want an extinction those sons of guns. Yeah. Uh, rather than me typing it uh, back to folks, as John was saying, I think that this need to to be a four cost. Just my initial thought is that I would have left it at a five, and I also would have excluded uh, Brave Howler, despite it being my favorite card so far from set one. Just I think it it just makes the meta game a little bit more interesting. Uh, set one. They could have changed it set two and done all kinds of interesting stuff, but a uh, set one I would have left it out. And I think the thing here is just that like. I wanted to play this in Chlorophyllia before, but now that it only costs four, um, I don't want to pair Wild with Blood in Control decks quite so much. All right, we're going to see how that one plays out. I, you yeah. know, I mean, you may not see it all the time, but I'm taking notes because anyone who's not really at expert level yet and on the stream and is trying to make sense of everything we're saying, you need to have a notebook going down and writing down notes and thoughts. Because keeping all of this stuff in your head, not a good idea. We have limited space up there. Yep. Uh, Fang of the Mountain God, my only comment is that there's no uh, one drops that block him so far from what we've seen. I mean, we haven't gone through the spoiler all the way. There's no one drops that block him. Uh, Savage Raider has two power, mm -hmm. but uh, it can't block. So Fang of the Mountain God is, as far as aggressive one drops go, uh, Savage Raider's probably slightly more aggressive in that he doesn't damage you. Fang of the Mountain God, on the other hand, is going to be slightly harder to deal with, and I think that's definitely notable. The, uh... 
yeah it's it's a fantastic one drop I, I, I can't add more than that all, all I'll say in response to that is boobs and that, that seemed to work pretty well for our viewers <laughs> well, alright we're, we're talking about uh, and this one uh, triggers well while we're still talking where you get the, the free savage raiders and everything but uh, as a one drop you know if you're playing blood and you're being aggressive he's uh, pretty much an auto include giant corpse fly uh, or if we're scrolling down we're jumping yeah. in the giant corpse fly I think is one of the, the higher pick blood commons like right behind murder. I agree. yeah it's you're getting actually quite a bit of value out of him um, I agree one... I mean, he's, he's a 1-1 one, one flight that's not so great but mm -hmm. uh, I mean he's card advantage right off the bat and I like him a lot I mean there's sometimes you're not going to discard a card but the fact that he still blocks Thunderbird for me is, is what makes him a big deal yeah, it's uh, I like it. It, it, it so, it's going to do what it does. Uh, I know we've had a we've gone back and forth on Corpse Fly because it was one of the early spoils that was done. I remember at first we were like, eh, it's three for one one, but we're like, that card advantage side of it uh, really just started playing it up. Um. So why don't why don't we move to Headless Executioner, which the like. I think if he was a headless executioner, he's he's like sharpening the axe. I, obviously, he takes it like pretty seriously. Like that's what I'm viewing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm getting really into like the the you know what their day to day life is. I think he'd be missing a few fingers. But, sure. Like, what if he's no way just he that good? Have an accident. Although, I mean, with an axe like that, you can't wield it in such a way that you'll hit yourself. I mean, it's two handed. You take a pretty big swing. I likely he'd be missing like a leg. Or possibly I, I'm with you an there, angle. but no, like he's sharpening it. Like even just sharpening the axe, sure. like he's got to mess himself up pretty good. Maybe, 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 maybe that's just what he does for a living. In which case, like, how much do you think he got in workers' comp? No, I like the fact that <laughs> this isn't his living. Like he's not. This isn't something that he's doing for someone. His flavor text clearly is they thought beheading the executioner would stop him. It only made him more determined. So okay. he wasn't doing that for anybody. He was just running around cutting people's heads off. He's right, apparently so. well seasoned. So he's like he's pretty pumped. His veins are sticking out, but like all I picture is like if you were that like ripped and like your veins were popping out, that mm -hmm. you would have blood spurting out of your neck. They're magic it's all veins now. It's more yeah. like jelly. Yeah. Okay. And, all right. And, hideous like, conversion. Well, I, oh, are we no, still talking about I'm this not guy? done with that. Like, God damn. He's he's totally <laughs> he's totally a hipster. Look at look at that. Like what what do you the call cloak? that? Like he. No, it's not a cloak. Like oh, it's, it's a just, cow. It's, it's, it's like a um. It's a it's a drawn a down cow. It's almost okay. like a scarf. It is the like, worst possible choice for someone who doesn't have a head. That thing is gonna fall <laughs> off constantly. Just he's a like hipster, though. Moving like, around. He just has to wear it. There's no point. It's not about functionality. It's about like you know how cool he is when he goes to the show down the street. Hey, you know what? And he's he, he's, he's rocking five... black and purple. He's also a five for five three, uh, five a uh, five three yep. for five with one and, threshold, and, and he that's also not rides terrible. a fixed geared bike. He can't he can't block, but he does. He is a hipster, and you just have to deal with yourself for yeah. having him in your yeah. deck. You know what? Why don't we just call him the headless hipster? Headless yeah. hipster. There I, you. I'm down with it. All right, hideous conversion. Hideous conversion. Uh, have they Umaro changed wins. hideous conversion? So I hard. can't actually see that tiny. tiny uh, it's box. still uh, it's still one temporary. One, one temporary. Yeah. I like Kitty's conversion. It's a uh, it's a good card, I, in my opinion, in certain decks. Now, one of the things I've been noticing so far in what we've got in the spoils is that the sacrifice of troops have all been uh, actions. They've not really been effects. So it's not like been when one is sacrificed, they've all been you got to sack a troop to get the effect. So it makes me wonder how many of these can uh can we keep layering into a blood deck? But it's also a constant, and now Wild destroys it. And wild last. That's at true. It. That's true. Wild will will kill it for cheaper than it costs. That is and, that is true. Or it'll kill it for the same cost and gain two life. Or yep. it will gain two <laughs> yeah. life. Yes. Like hideous conversion is good. It, it's gonna it, in the decks in the decks that want it, they really want it. In the decks that don't care about it, it's just not a card. Very true. It's gonna have its place. Now let's move on to the high tomb lord. Boom! 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 Okay, if the other one was a hipster, this, what's this one from He needs name? to be more of a badass. Like, he's not badass enough for me. What's like, that crap coming out of him? 
It's like it's a black and white thing, except for like this purple area and a little bit of blood behind. Yeah, Where, where's I the think purple coming from? the purple looks like it's coming from like a hammer or a weapon. So this is probably going to uh, be a cool extended art. Extended art will make that make that yeah. clear. I I really wish they would do that more. Honestly, I was very not impressed with their extended art on the dem demolition. Well, I'm actually, like, okay, it's a longer building. Who cares? So two things. Um, first off, we have 21 viewers, which I was going to say at 20, 20 viewers, I'm going to reveal a special thing about High Tomb Lord. And, you know, we're kind of cheating that we have us three, but uh, I've already seen the, the High Tomb Lord extended art, and he's mm -hmm. not wearing any pants. <gasps> nice. He shouldn't be. Yeah. He's obviously wearing a yeah. kilt. Yeah. No, oh, no, man. He, I mean, he's just, he's just showing it all off. Nice. He's got, he's got nothing to hide. And that's where the purple's coming from? <laughs> oh. oh <laughs> that man. is a very bad form of the clap. Oh. He he needs to be more of a badass. That that, that like uh, armor in the background that looks like it has some red on it. Like mm -hmm. the red, the red doesn't like it doesn't yeah. look like blood. It just looks like paint that somebody splashed on in the armor. And like he needs to have really fucked that person up. Well, yeah, there, there, goes there the needs to be some dents in there. Oh goodness, <laughs> he's, he's not that. Yeah, well, okay. he is a little ribbed for their pleasure. Um, and his helmet. That helmet is not effective. Vikings would never have horns on their helmet because all someone would do is pull them down and then take their head off. I disagree. But he's with trying that. to be bad. He, obviously, he died. So, well, apparently, it was because he was wearing that helmet. Right, but uh, on the other hand, he's a two threshold six cost that gets plus one plus one for every card in every graveyard. Uh, yeah, every card, uh, not just yep. all troops. Yeah, yeah, and that means that means in raids and PVE. Yeah, that's he's going, going to be... to get them from every single person and the the boss, and he is quite strong, I think, personally. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to he's gonna drop Basi and be bombastic in PvE. Basically, what you're trying to say, Guare, is we should start talking about the cards rather than the flavor again. Oh, no, I'm done. I <laughs> yeah. finished my card description. You guys can talk about whatever you want now. Yeah. Well, we have Alrighty. a couple people uh, wanting well, to push let's, us let's towards the Incubation, incubation slave. slave. Which, this card creeps me out. I just got back from Costa Rica, and there were some huge spiders in Costa Rica and this guy creeps me out. The uh it's one this actually reminds me of something that happened here in Texas. Uh sometimes spiders will start forming communities and they built a giant canopy of web across a town. It was one of the largest uh communal spider colonies ever and it freaked a town out and you should have had like Alfred Hitchcock there filming because y you'd imagine them just coming down and pulling you up into that canopy it was it was a thing and i'm i'm sorry i didn't okay. i don't want to creep we'll, we'll people stop. out yeah all right so be quiet we'll back slave the, you'll the, wake the babies uh, that's exactly what i was going to talk about right now how is he a slave if he's bound like what's he doing for them as a i'm slave? pretty sure they're talking about someone well maybe they're talking about him i don't know it's like if you keep screaming there's going to be more of them coming after you well y'all do know how the venom are made right He's a food slave. Yes, I'm aware of that. Do you want so, to fill I'm not in? Fill me in. So the venom are actually orcs corrupted turned into spiders. So if he's an incubation slave, he's an enslaved orc turned into the incubation for the next venom. So that's why he's a orc slave. I see. And okay. that's why he's in an that incubation works. slave. So he used to do labor. Being a very poor orc, because an orc should have committed suicide before becoming a slave to a venom, but uh, this broken down orc is now serving as a baby holder. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. it's it's. Uh, I I think the card probably makes sense. It's just questionable to people that don't pay attention to the lore. I guess. I think it's an interesting card, definitely for a limited. Like, I like that it's a con a, a troop instead of a content, so you can still block with it if like you're in a really desperate situation. <laughs> You could block I think with that it, it was and then a... remove all the tokens and still get like that chump block value while still getting all the tokens. I like that. The, uh... I think it was a bad idea from a magic perspective because people are going to look at that and be like, "Eggs? Oh my god, eggs! Oh, I'm I'm out of here." The uh, now so it's uh, the start of the turn. You get an encounter on here, so you drop this turn two. Earliest you can drop it uh, to pop it is turn six if you're dropping a a threshold or a resource every turn. So, right. about how many eggs do you think we could, uh, spider spawn, do you think we could get out of this on a, on an activation? If you're playing it to turn two, like, getting four out of it's pretty realistic. I think if you're playing it later than that, you're gonna get less, just cause, like, you're gonna be more desperate to activate it. That's, that's just me. 
It like, does look I like it'll get a sacrifice potential. deck, though. Yeah, I oh, mean, yeah. it's a cool card. It has a lot of potential in in several different deck types. Uh, I think it's a cool, pretty cool card, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad they include it. Like, it, yeah, cool is a good way to describe it. Uh, Life Siphon um, mm. is is what I would definitely consider a bomb rare. Like, it doesn't remove cards quite like Burn to the Ground does. Mm-hmm. But uh, the fact that it keeps you in the game, like, you play Life Siphon, you're probably going to win the game. Like, if you play I... it for six. The, uh, well, I mean, it's, you know, champion on champion Life Drain. I think Life Siphon is, I love Life Drain. is a great card. Uh, Life Siphon, but... if it's, it's, got a, it's got its place. Game goes on longer, Life oh. Siphon gets more powerful. It seems like chat's all disagreeing with us. They, they all yeah. think it's pretty shitty and pretty bad. I, I have to say that I have played a couple of games, test games, with with someone who was doing a life siphon based deck, and uh, it it has a lot of synergy that may not be immediately obvious. I on on that same one, I've played maybe three or four games of of limited like draft where we were using life siphon, and I didn't lose a single game where I drew it. Uh, and there's a little I mean that's a bad sample size I think some of the decks I was playing against were kind of oh, on the weaker side but I definitely never lost when I was playing Life Siphon like it just it smashed the opponent's face and also I would just say is like when we were drafting I think there were fewer cards available and the format felt a little slower so it was a lot easier to Life, life Siphon for like 8 or 9 than it was for uh, that currently maybe we'll mm-hmm. see soon enough how fast the format is but uh, it's something to take into consideration. Uh, I really like to think of it as it's the the turns finisher. So if you pull this a top deck late game, and you've been beating on back and forth, it's going you know it 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 finishes. There's nothing wrong with having maybe two in a constructed deck and finishing your opponent when you think you need it, or maybe sideboarding those two in from when you know you need your direct damage. So, the the last question I would say about life saving is. You have this, so pick one. You take this or burn to the ground. I think it's it's probably burn to the ground most of the time, right? Burn to the ground uh, can target creatures, right? Yeah, it can kill creatures. It doesn't gain you life. But I uh, think that being able to target creatures is going to be relevant more often than gaining life is. Uh, I would do burn to the ground because they're both X spells. but And the big reason is is because if I can only target one... If I target the champion, but they still have the 8-8 eight, eight swinging at my face I have to kill them so Life Siphon is a finishing card Burn to the Ground is a finishing card and a removal card and that kind of synergy is fantastic so if I could play Life Siphon and Burn to the Ground and I can have 8 versions of kill my opponent 4 of which kill creatures I'm okay with that yeah and also I guess in Limited if you're playing it like Burn to the ground, it can fit either in like a slower deck or a faster deck. Life Siphon just kind of wants to lean towards slower, so that's another thing pushing it in the direction. But Burn burn is definitely more flexible. Uh, what are we looking at now for the next All couple right. cards? Alright, let's, uh, let's move on down to the Malice Demon. A 7 for 8 8 Flight and Crush with a tongue that goes. La, 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 la. I think that's a tongue there. That oh no! Part, that's a, that's that really art. that's a really protuberant chin and gnashing teeth. That art was on something else, wasn't it? Or was it always on this it, card? It looks really similar to a couple magic cards I've seen. Okay. Four. Oh, it's the million dollar sleeves. Good call. There you go. Oh, okay, that's what it is. Yeah. Well done. So, uh, flight crush. What do you think? Um. Uh, for seven, for an eight-eight flight crush is. Good, I guess. I mean, I don't. When, when I would, this, I wouldn't play it. I don't think. When is this better than, uh, or when is this better or worse than Uranus? Because that's, I mean, they're the same cost. So what's the yeah, comparison I mean, the, there? The crush is good. Uh, the if, bigger body. Right. The. Well, when you the crush against the flight creatures is, I think, what makes it somewhat interesting because most of the flights are either three threes or they're one ones. Maybe some two twos here and there, right? A flight, so, a flight crush yeah. is very strong. So, well, like the crush almost feels unnecessary. Like if it has flight, it's gonna probably be pretty evasive, and it kind of gets back to what we were saying about the battle beetle. Mm-hmm. But yeah, 
I, I think it's one of those. That's a, that's a tough call. I mean, I mean, really, I think that between this or Urinaz, you've got to ask yourself what you're trying to accomplish with your deck because Urinaz does different stuff. I mean, yeah, he's he's different. Like if you're just trying to beat in there, like for limited, I would rather have Malice Demon because it, it's going to be simpler in that sense. I I agree. I think. In constructed, uh, so I guess the in constructed you're talking like either. When is it worse? Is like <coughs> if if they both get removed as soon as they hit play, at least Urnaz had an effect. But that mm -hmm. effect, I would say, is irrelevant most of the time. Like it doesn't matter if you really mill them five cards if those five cards didn't have any impact on who actually won the game, which is going to be more majority of the cases. Like the if they're both the same. Well, I, the uh, one way I like to look at them, especially if I'm trying to like construct or do a theme or like a casual deck, is. The Malice Demon is a lot more autonomous than Uranaz is. Uranaz yeah. needs that synergy from the other cards in the deck to make its uh, mill powerful. So the Malice Demon stands on its own, but I think because it's so autonomous, it pushes itself out on its cost for Constructed, unless there's a way to like trick him into play. Like If there's some way that I can find a way to pull him like turn 5 for cheap... That might be yeah. fun, but... Uh... Sure. Yeah, I, I don't like him. That's my biggest problem with him. I don't like him because he costs so much. I, yeah. In limited, yeah, in limited I'll still. never get him out. Uh, it's not it's not worth trying to bank on that. And constructed, more potential is there, but I think I'd probably go a different route. Yeah, if I was trying to go that big, I would go with something else. Like, in limited, if I was really going that big, I would just go one cost higher to Kraken, which I really like. Like, I think Kraken mm. does have some potential in that regards. And even Kraken isn't the most powerful bomb. Like, a lot of people are saying King Great Gabriel's pretty good. And the things he does are interesting. But, like, this guy doesn't doesn't do enough on his own. You know where I think this guy's going to be one of those uh, interesting flavor demons? He's going to look great extended art and great foil. He'll be pretty. Alrighty. So uh, we're looking at what next? Uh, the Mazat a new, Ranger? A new minor socket troop for four. Ooh, um, a four for four. A four one. one. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not happy about this card, but I mean, it's, it's hard to not like. It's hard to not like sockets, though. Yeah, it's it's easy to find a way for each socket to be or each socketed card to be good, but I think maybe just because it has it's the one defense, it's got fewer modes in which it's good. Like, it's definitely limited in that regard. It's like, it's good in the battle sense. It can just be removal, but then it's not a 4-1 anymore. It's just a removal card. Why don't you just right. play murder? Yeah, the, yeah uh, I agree. I agree. I yeah. think now, that's probably one of the Actually, someone uh, mentioned in the chat that uh, the minor socket you could throw on the uh, sapphire socket and give it flight. A 4 for 4 one flight? Not horrible. Uh, I'm still not yeah. happy with it. Uh, I would. I mean, Boulder Brute is a four-four with flight for five, and and you know they'll trade with each other, but Boulder Brute's going to be able to block a lot more of them. And I don't know. It, yeah, it's all right. This is the four-for-four-one flight in blood. I'm not excited about either of the minor uh, <laughs> socketed blood cards. Although, is this the new Shame Gladiator? We haven't gotten that far. Maybe there won't be a Shame Gladiator anymore. There may not. Uh, Midnight Shepherd yeah. still two for one one, still crazy amounts of threshold. Doesn't lose a threshold though, so that's yeah. good. You yeah. can activate him multiple times, but then like it's still super clunky. By the time you have a uh, five threshold out, like what else were you doing the rest of the game? And mm -hmm. he's super easy to remove. Like your opponent is gonna see it coming. Like I, I don't see myself playing Midnight Shepherd. Yeah, I mean, he's he's definitely way better now, and I've always liked the idea of his effect, but it's going to be very hard to build a deck that can reliably get that effect off on a, on a reasonably sized creature. So Now, here's... the interesting part is if you do a little self-mill and you put in four Shard of Fate and uh, four of the... Uh, oh, goodness, the, the Relic or the Artifact that uh, gives you Threshold, it's a little bit easier to get his Threshold requirement. And That's if you, true. you could self mill in that malice demon, maybe turn six, uh, and then keep putting them out. So bring them down, okay. throw them against their face, pop them back up, run against his face, pop them no. back up. Here's here's my thing is like everybody was saying, you know, he's way better now. And he's better. Yeah, he doesn't have a restriction. I don't think he's way better. Like that restriction I think was pretty minor before. Mm -hmm. Like it limited the number of times you could activate him but it didn't really limit 
him that much because really if you're activating him if you're playing him in your deck you're going to be playing him in a heavily one color splashing all the other colors in order to get the threshold and you're mm-hmm. just every time you use him you are only going to remove whatever threshold you had the most of you're going to have more than one of something and like i guess that's what i'm getting the yeah, uh... and he's he's so susceptible to removal honestly that you're not going to get the opportunity to use him more than a couple of times if even that so and, and really if you did get the opportunity opportunity to use him you were more likely to win with another card that would have oh, also, you know, had it's in a graveyard, so it's not just your own. Um, yeah. That's nice. Uh, I think in this case, try to pick up four of them for as cheap as possible, and wait until he breaks, because at some no. point he might break. He'll be cheap. You can pick him up cheap, but I'm yeah, and, and that's what I mean. Cheap, pick him up opinion. cheap, and when he breaks, he'll pop up in value. Oh, I mean, I don't doubt that there will be some deck that makes use of him, but I don't think it'll be a very good deck. So yeah, that. that's what I'm getting at. Uh, so next up, what do we got? All right, scrolling down, misfortune, a five for two threshold basic action deal two damage to each opposing champion, and they each choose and discard two cards. Well, it's not lightning. Yeah, I mean it's it is what it is. Uh, dropping two cards from their hand is useful, but it's with that turn five. You may eliminate the cool things they have in their hand at that point. You may uh, you yeah. may drop the Urnaws out of there or something. It needs to like put a two-two flyer into play as well for me. Then then maybe I play it. Maybe it's one of those. Yeah, it's uh, a miss. Maybe it's an early disruption card that they just you know they use it to teach you in some of the early starter decks. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm I'm with you on there. You know you gotta make you gotta make on not optimal card. Mm-hmm. And then we have Murder. You know, I think Murder is a terrible card, and fuck it. <laughs> yeah, I think I think you'll expect to see Murder probably 15th pick, like, 9 out of 10 times. I would probably pick, like, Shadow Go Grit, Witch, and probably Pact of Life over Murder almost every single time. Sure, Pact of Life, definitely. That's... Yeah. <laughs> All right, Murder's uh, great. We, we are, yeah, it's, it's a good yeah, card. Yeah. yeah. I, um, I want to see its extended art, and I want to foil every one I own. So this is one I feel strongly about. When is Necessary Sacrifice better than Oracle Song? All right, so Necessary Sacrifice. Four, two threshold, an additional cost, sacrifice a troop, draw three. Um, Has you know, Oracle Song changed? Or Well, it, I, we don't know. It, maybe it hasn't. I'll scroll up, or I'll find it. But as far as we know, Oracle Song is draw two for three. Mm-hmm. That's what it was, and if it's still that way, um, I think Oracle Song only had one threshold. All right, it's Oracle Song. A necessary sacrifice is better than Oracle Song when you're playing a mono blood deck, and you have no sapphire. Is is it better when you're playing wild blood? I think wild blood might be the better combo with the maybe with the Shin Hair Creation Engine in it. I, I know a lot of people like necessary sacrifice. It's just a, I've had this discussion with a couple people like just the oracle song versus it no i i definitely think the oracle song is better but i also think the oracle song should be better because that's okay. the color that should be stronger mm-hmm. in drawing cards i mean sapphire should have an advantage there necessary sacrifice i don't think is bad enough that it's not a good card to play when Yo, you're not in sapphire i i like it with with champions that create a a token like a cheap token mm-hmm. you know and you can just throw that away and it just turns into a draw three yeah, and I mean, if you're playing a Shin Hair deck or something, the, the sacrifice cost is not a thing, so it doesn't really matter there. Yeah, uh, maybe a Blood Shin Hair deck. Uh, have we seen the card that uh, allows him to create Battle Hoppers every time for, like, the cost of life or something? Uh, no, we have not. Well, that if it's here... That may not be in this document. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. So, right. uh, moving Pact on to Pact of Pain. Pay two. <laughs> this is actually... Pay two. Oh, I'll let you go. Draw a card. So, uh... What were we were saying, Pact of Pain. Uh, actually, this is another one where I'm like, when is it better than Oracle Song? You know, and to get the same value out of out of mm-hmm. this as opposed to Oracle Song, you're you're paying uh, what seven as well as two life. You're finally getting your two cards. Sure, you can you can play this and then activate it as an instant later. But mm-hmm. at some point, you still had to spend those three as a basic action, and that's the Oracle Song. Right. I I, I like the the Pact. The Pact of Pain's okay. Uh, 
I like it, but I don't want to play it. I just think it looks cool. I remember I mean, the moment this was first spoiled in a stream, and everyone was like, this is insane, and I was too. And I was like, wait, nope, not so good. Well, yeah, it was insane because I think back. we were thinking of magic ideas at the time. Yeah. And the more that we've been tuning our minds to Hex, the it, we've been altering, which is good. It's not yeah. necropotent. That's true. It really just comes back around to the to the fact that, once again, I mean, card draw should be worse in, in a color than it is in blue. So, <laughs> I don't know. I, I like that they're focusing on color wheel. Uh, Rockcaster. All right, so this is a 5 for 3 2 Venom Mage. When it enters play, destroy target opposing troop with cost 3 or less. Wait, is Zarlox the Broodlord gone? Is this the uh, new Zarlox? Maybe. Oh, well, we no, don't see the, my favorite we don't see Z's yet. Well, I scroll down. I don't I think he's gone, is he? It, this oh, is yeah, the same effect. Yeah, he is. Well, I mean, maybe he, maybe he's still in there. Maybe he he's one of those cards. Else. But if they could script this guy, they can script Zarlox, so he would be in there. They oh, may just have bummer. not done it yet. I don't know. Oh. I would, well, yeah, okay. There are uh, 70 cards, so who the heck knows? Well, I'm going to go cry in the corner for a minute then. And you well, guys can keep talking. Okay. I don't know. I like I like Rockcaster here, which means I probably would have even liked Zarlock even more. But, uh, you know, we were already talking about a lot of strong three drops in the set. And this one looks at it and goes, Your three drop is no longer anything to me. Even though I showed up on turn five a turn later than I would have preferred. I mean, basically, though, he's a five cost removal because he's burnable uh, with three two. I mean, I don't he's I don't like him. Yeah, he's he's yeah, too fragile. Four. Yeah, it's 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 like a five cost card that removes a card and gives you an irre irrelevant body like the three two isn't relevant for me. So yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But can I play this guy and kill your uber boulder brute? No. Not Boulder Brute, no, but no, uh, Wild uh, Root Dancer. No, Briar, uh, I can kill you Wild can... Root Dancer and I can kill Briar Legion. Yeah, if you're killing a good Briar Legion, though, <laughs> I probably have a few others. That's very true. Yeah, I, um, I mean, he's he's too expensive, his body's too weak, he's he's a 5 cost removal for cost 3 or less, it's not it's not good. Yeah, okay, I suppose, so uh, why not play a, a murder and a better 2 drop? So, as mediocre and uh, unimpressed as we are with him, I am even more unimpressed with Shadow Grove Witch. I think hopefully we can just leave it at that. Is that Shadow Grove Witch is probably going to be a fifteenth pick a large portion of the time? Yeah. Uh, more or less. I mean, a four for two two that can sometimes pro possibly kill something in someone's hand is also not so great. Yeah. You know, uh, the way I see Shadow Grove Witch being interesting is in a Blood Diamond uh, limited deck. Because it's got the the four drop, which will activate a lot of different inspires that I haven't casually seen in the diamond, and so you'll get a lot of good procs out of it, and then get that removal effect on there. If you look at no, it that I'm... way, I, I might it, it, any card you can basically it. spend any card to a, sper a perfect place, but the, it's just not a yeah. good card. Yeah, I think I think at the end of the day, if I'm playing Shadow Grove Witch in my 23 cards. I'm you probably have not going to be winning yeah. as a drafter. Failed. Yeah. All right. I, I, I would. I would probably hold on. I would probably go into a third color rather than play Shadow Grove Rich in a. Yeah. In a draft. I mean, you probably could splash like a murder that you saw going in the third pack over Shadow Grove. Well, if murder, if you're playing murder, you're playing Shadow Grove Witch. I mean, sure. they're both in the same colors, but you know, you could splash some other good card from a different color, and it would be better than Shadow Grove Witch. All right, so uh, right, Shin here, you'll just yeah. Let's let's move on down. All right, so two for two one. Other Shin here, you control dies. It gets permanent plus one plus one. I like the art. All right, this guy is incredibly strong in that sacrifice deck I was talking about. He basically makes that deck. Uh, it's it's really good. Uh, the problem is that he's a two one for two. He's easily removable after the first time but the second time you know that's when you start getting something the uh and i think this is a guy that you hold back as well so you're you're about to go you're about to do all your big sacrifices most of the sacrifice stuff we saw didn't have an additional cost to it that was good so you drop this down and you start your sacrificing and it's now permanent because i remember there was a time this guy had a, a limit to to the turn or one of the uh shin hair sackers had a limit to the turn now the sucker's permanent 
So, so I think maybe uh, you end up playing him turn five and try to uh, really maximize. I mean, just getting value. one of them isn't that great. He can be jump blocked, you know. He yeah. can be all sorts of things. But when sure. you get like two or three out, and it's not hard when you're going through a lot of cards. I had I had several out on many Gen Con decks, which that Gen Con Rabbit deck wasn't the best ever, but the Eulogist did some work for me many times. Uh, but I mean, he, I wouldn't first pick him or anything. He he's gets just... yeah, he gets more work done than the Determined Zombie. Like he's that guy with an upside. And honestly, like he's at least sucking the souls out of other rabbits. Like that <laughs> that means he's clearly more determined than that zombie. Like that zombie's just standing there. You don't even know if he's still alive. Like that's a very good yeah. point. Okay. Now, Shin Hair Highborn. A two Shin for one. Shin Hair Highborn. When it dies, you create a battle hopper and put it into play. Basically, you just sacrifice him, and then you sacrifice something else. It's yeah. more sacrifice yeah, fodder Actually, for, that, for the sacrifice deck. That, that's yeah, exactly, exactly what it's for. That's, that's a lot of flavor sense right there, though. <laughs> that is a lot of flavor sense. Oh, I don't, I don't believe I've seen this one. But quick action. Uh, minus one this turn. I like the picture. Okay, maybe we found the card that you're playing less often than Shadow Grove, which... Well, I mean, like... <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, maybe you'll play this once in a while, but, like, Minus when are one? you happy about including this in I mean, deck? Yeah, I mean, there's a couple of times that you might get a combat trick off and, you know, your guy just doesn't die that they thought was good. This is not good. If I you don't... ever... If you ever win a game because and, you, and this is in your deck because of this you, card, you, you like <laughs> if you ever won a game and this was in your deck, you won despite having this in your deck. You like that was <laughs> you that overcame. Was your, that, yeah, that, that was your accomplishment <laughs> is that you were playing Sorrow and Shadow Grove Witch and you still managed to win. Like that says that much about your opponent. You they handicapped must have yourself. Terrible. Yeah, yeah. The handicap card. It's called Sorrow because you're sad that you had to include it. You had to exactly. include it in your deck. That's going to be the new hashtag. Hashtag Sorrow in my deck. And then you're like, <laughs> and you can like tweet your winning deck. Yeah, this, this is not good. Why? Yeah, okay, they have to have bad cards. That's, bad cards that's have to exist. That's just the truth of it. But that is a really bad card. So let us put it in our that's memory. True. It is all opposing troops get minus, you know, whatever. Which, no. You no. know, versus a shin... Is is it not? That's what it says. Well, no, no, no it's not that. Like, it's I'm just... not excited about that. Like, yeah. you know, maybe there's that time your opponent's swinging in with a ten ten with crush invincible, and you're like, oh, but I gave it minus one. And yeah, I still there got also my face there crushed. also is the time that you know there's fifty one one rabbit swinging in on you, and you say no, you're all zero rabbits. I take no, no. damage. At well, that point, what you're saying is no, you can kill me next turn. Yeah. Yes, that's very true. Yeah. Uh... Because it doesn't drop the health, it's although your four cost limited. extinction could really help afterwards yeah, as well. Okay. It at best it buys you a turn versus a bunch of weenies. Yeah. No, it's it's absolutely true. It's a terrible card. I don't I don't like it at all. Yeah, no, but we don't we, have, we don't need to explain why it's ever a good card. Then we, we have a on. terrible transfer. It's a quick action. One damage I, to target like you for transfer. each blood you have, and then you gain well, one life for each damage done this way. In limited I like it a lot actually. I, I like it a lot too. You know, I mean, the... it's the opposite of the other one where it can only target troops and not champions, but I think that's more useful and limited, honestly. Yeah, I mean, the other one can... Well, the other one I don't think can target champions either. It just caught... It's just cheaper. Oh, Life Siphon. Well, it reminds me of Life Siphon uh, a little bit because, you know, you play down all your blood. You have a, you know, 6, 7 threshold when you might want to play this if you don't have a, something to destroy right off the bat on turn 5. And, you know, Boom. I deal one damage for each blood I've got, then I gain life. It's kind of so, like I mean, your champion has life drain. It's a removal that's a little bit more costly than murder and has an upside. And, you know, it's it's not it's a bad fair. Card. I, yeah. I think I think it'll it's have totally its fair. place somewhere. We may not know exactly where it is yet, but we know one thing. All right. Whatever happened to our headless uh, executioner happened to this guy because they each have that's purple true. veins. Yeah, that's the purple vein. He's got the purple vein. So what's... that's a good call. Good yeah. catch. What's, All right. What's now, the, yeah. since I had the ninety-one, ninety-one Mushwaki, I feel it is my responsibility to read the Mushwaki card. Go for it. You're more because, than welcome. You know. Do it. All right. Rock it. So it's a four cost one one, and called the Mushwaki, uh, and he, basically, when he enters play, if Wait, he is hungry. I need to interrupt here. How do you know he's a he? You can tell. Look at his junk. Do you see any boobs? Anyway, if as, there are yeah, no boobs, exactly, it is no male. Boobs. Exactly. Thank you. 
Oh, we said boobs. We have 22 now. We had 21 a second ago. I'm telling you, it's magic. Actually, I think we had 23. Oh, we uh, lost one. We hit, we hit 24, okay. but it's, you bring you him know, into play. It is what it and is. And basically, you sacrifice any number of shin hair you like, and he gets plus three, plus three for each. And he's not good. I mean, I wish you were. He's kind of not bad, but he's also not good because, I mean, he could just be chunk blocked. He's... The, uh, I, I wish the, he was better. The only time you ever win with this is when you turn him into a 91, 91 mushwaki, <laughs> and you know your opponent is holding a murder, but they don't play it just because they're like, yeah, I'll give it to you. No, no, I'll be I'll be fair. I'll, I'll tell you how this went down. I won with that 91, 91 mushwaki because the opposing champion, the opposing player felt that he should not be allowed to block a 91 91 mushwaki like he could have he could have but he said no no i can't do that it's against my morals it needs to have crush it just it really does yeah at least throw him a bone i mean it's the mushwaki everybody loves this card it needs to have crush well you know it synergizes well with the shin hair deck and y'all know i love going into perfect situations but you'd have a lot of shin hair to be able to feel uh, to feed to the mushwaki, and Wild has the cards to give the sucker crush. I I it think just needs that, to have it though. Uh, yeah, I agree. Or, or at least an effect that says when you get it to ninety one ninety one, <laughs> then it has crush, or can't be blocked. Either you know what, of those would here, be fine. Here it is. It's like when it gets ten or ten or more uh, attack, it has crush. When it has like twenty or more. Um, I don't know. It has super crush, and at at thirty or more, super it crush. has yeah, super crush. All right. Um, and at thirty or more, it's invincible. How about sure? You know Sounds why good. don't why don't we do something similar to this one? Give it a legendary piece of equipment, so that in PVE, it, whenever it's uh fifteen fifteen, uh, it's immediately invincible, and then you just right. go wreck face in PVE with it. Uh, we'll talk about throw cutter. Yeah, we're done with much game. Yeah. Th- throat cutter uh it got new art i'm pretty sure i like this art better than whatever it had before i think the the art is kind of confusing like the colors it looks like the guy is stabbing himself and then you look at it closer you're like no he's trying to pull the arm off but like it, well, i don't know he the is, way he's, he's the pulling hair, up on the it, hair it makes me look like he's trying to stab him in the head and then i realize he's not holding a knife mm. oh good he isn't holding a knife isn't he the other guy's holding the- a knife the the flavor text needs to have more swear words. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, it, it just does. So he's a three cost two two with a one blood threshold that gives all of your orcs rage one. Mm. I think he's pretty pretty good. I, yeah. I I would even say he's quite strong. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, turn one, uh, fang, and to turn two, blood harbinger, and to turn three, throat cutter is is uh, too strong, and it's just like it's a good hand. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Now, the next card is one that was featured in the stream and played a few times. The Wailing Banshee. A one for one one. This troop can't be blocked except by artifact troops and or blood troops. Oh, yeah, man. I mean, it's a one one that can't be blocked. It's it's good. I mean, it's a good start card, I guess. But And it's got boobs. Yeah, it also it's, has it's boobs, actually... Which... Uh, except for the crazy hands. Not bad looking card. Uh, I mean, I can... I can ignore that. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, uh, it it. I think we can. There say was it's another card that was exactly Sorrow. the same, wasn't there? Was there no, already a one one uh, that couldn't be blocked? No, there was a. Uh, there was another one that couldn't be blocked, but it wasn't a one one. Okay. All right. So far, this is the second card I've seen in the spoils that's uh, got this can't be blocked ability. Because life. Yeah, oh, it's a. Uh, Sorrow. Yes, it is better. Than corrupt Sorrow. harvester. <laughs> Corrupt Harvester is the other one that's got this ability on it. I was oh. I was just incredibly disappointed by the next card because it says Wall of Corpses instead of Wall of Bears. <laughs> yeah. Which I'm really looking yeah. forward to Wall of Bears. You're looking forward to Wall of Bears. I'm looking forward to Fish Hands. Fish Hands, yes. That is the best story I think that I heard at Gen Con was, was his description of how Fish Hands came to be. Yeah, okay, I, I, uh, you're going to have to tangent and share a little bit because I have not heard the Fish I, Hands story. I'm not, tell, I'm not telling okay. the Fish Hands story. Well, you I, have to get Ben Stoll to tell it. Well, I'm, I'm actually partially responsible for the Fish Hands story, so I will I will tell the Fish Hands story. Oh, uh, but as, well, as best as I can. Fine. Could, oh, okay, I won't tell it. No, tell the Fish no, Hands. You, oh, <laughs> it's it's been built up. You have to tell now. All right, so we'll tell talk about Fish Hands. So... Uh, ben Stoll did, which is one of the things that got me, like, I, w- I was really excited that he did this. I think it was totally awesome. He did an uh, interview 
um, well, not an interview, like a live, what do they call it? Like you do it on Reddit, and it, mm-hmm. so you're talking back to the fans and they're asking questions. Yeah, an AMA. Um, and it was on the forums and did it months ago. You probably actually still find it on there. And he talked about fish hands in there. I, he, what they basically said is, here's a list of 20 cards, and they're just the names. And they were cards we were excited to make, but they didn't make it into set one. And one of those cards was called Fish Hands, and that jumped out at me. I was like, well, what is this? Is it somebody, is it a fish with human hands? Is it a human with fish hands? Is it, like, it's some weird combination? And he was saying it evolved from him having a discussion with one of his friends. They were developing a virtual game in their heads of uh, just fun like wacky things and eventually it devolved into uh having fish hands and and being able to like go around in this virtual world and you had to manipulate objects as if you had fish for hands and uh and that's fish hands and maybe it'll be in a future set i really hope it is if they don't i i'm gonna be angry oh i can suddenly see them making a fish hands dungeon well see the best part i think of that of that story was that i mean it it started so innocently in that okay it's a collaborative world where we can all sit and talk and we can just change reality and then you know you can change the sky you can fly you can do whatever you want and then you can like say all right you you now have fish hands you have you have you know living fish for hands so you need to still feed the fish what happens if you don't feed them (laughs) right there's no telling and i mean though though i was i was much happier with the with envisioning someone like w like playing edward 40 hands you know by just yeah, taping no. fish to their <laughs> Actually, hands that was one of my things on the forums yeah. I, I said edward 40 hands but with fish yeah, <laughs> with fish yeah I, I mean as beautiful <laughs> as that is i like to think that whatever fish hands is has more to do with the idea of changing or altering reality and less to do with a guy that has fish on his hands and well, that's just because bitstool is crazily uh interesting like that so I don't know why I think of uh, what what's the show where like quantum leap like he quantum leaps and all of a sudden becomes a person that has fish hands like how does having fish hands make that guy a better person? No, it's about how uh-huh. he realizes that he needs to get prosthetics instead of fish hands. Yeah. That's what that episode is about. I and... think it's about learning to communicate with your fish hands to know what they really want yeah. and to be able to help them. No, that's the that's what well, Edward Fishy Hands to play is about. Hex if you had fish hands, that's true. It would be they'd be flopping around your keyboard. You'd have to get the waterproof keyboards, like the child maybe, ones. It'd maybe maybe that's what the actual card is. Is like, it's like a special event they hold, and they have these fish hand like uh, gloves that you put on, and you have to play hex with the fish hands. I like it. Yeah, I, I like so. it too. Yeah, there you go. So if it's not uh, a card, that's what they have. Wall, of, wall corpses. of corpses. I'm glad we went on that tangent. So defensive. This troop gets plus defense equal to the total defense of all troops in your graveyard. Holy cow. Yeah, that is a that is one of the few cards that grows and reduces depending on what's in your graveyard. I, I mean, the problem is that's a really strong effect on a card that doesn't get really strong until it's pretty much too late. Like, I don't think it'll be playable. Uh... Alright, so... Uh, not to interrupt on the wall of corpses, people were asking who's talking right now. You got function, function fails on YouTube and other places, and you got Mokog, uh, Hex Hunter Mokog on YouTube, and then we also are are uh, glad to be having Quare along with us. You might know him from the forums. He's he he posts way more than anybody else. Yes, he's the. Uh, I'm over here on the cam. Hi, where has got crazy eyes. And uh, function with his mo uh, with his mohawk is down there in the bottom corner with his lovely Uber banner that he got uh, made up, which I think is absolutely fabulous. Yeah, maybe maybe one day I'll have to stream with a mohawk. I have to be lazy enough to actually put it up, though. I'm too lazy these days. All right. I tried to at Gen Con, but yeah. All right, wretched brood. Uh, so this is the one I was trying to remember earlier. Uh, looks like it's still the same. Uh, they haven't really changed anything on it, right? Let's see. Lose one health, create a battle hopper, put it into play. Yep, that's it. So, nice, solid. It's good to see that it's there. Doesn't break anything. Battle hoppers are used to sacrifice. I think the only interesting thing about this is that your battle hoppers come in the shard color from the constant that they come from. And I think that's cool. Yes. There is a, a different color battle hopper for blue and or for black and green. Now, what right, I would, so, I think would be awesome is if they had slightly different art for each one. To me, that would be uh, even cooler. I agree. 
So this is completely off topic. We're back on like the function thing again. Oh, okay. uh, Hexam Former said something about function. <laughs> All right. So now, now, not not only is he a bad driver that can't stay in his lane, he's like that's the more the more punk rock version of function. Like <laughs> it's like it's the crust punk kid who just doesn't showers and like shouts at you for change when you're walking down like uh, Hate Street in San Francisco or something. Yeah, that's it. All right. Let's move on to Zentoth's cards right here. So we have Zentoth's Chosen, a 6 for 5 4. Uh, sacrifice two, droop, two troops as an additional cost to play, and this troop can't be blocked. I I mean, honestly, there are some people that really like Zentoth's Chosen. I am not one of those people. I I think the cost is too much, sacrificing two troops. I mean, I, I don't like him very much. They need to change his name to Urgot. I, I'd like him a little more if his name was Urgot. I I agree. Yeah. He needs to like have that, and he needs to make that weird. I don't know if you guys play LOL. But he needs to make that like weird noise that Urgot makes, like whenever you uh -huh. play him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think then then I would just try to include him in my deck so that like the opponent had to listen to that, like whatever had that to weird noise to that is. Noise. <laughs> Yeah, uh, do you have I, anything to add to that? I'm just, I'm just mad on this guy. Because part of it is, is when I see myself getting to turn 6 and playing, I imagine that I've been trading some of my blood troops or I've already had to do a sacrifice on like turn 5. So when it comes in, I look and I'm like, to play this guy, I have to sacrifice two dudes that I like. Or i got to find a way to bring in two dudes I don't like to kill off. I'm like, Venon are assholes. What? That's what I yeah. think of when I see this card. Venon are assholes. And or they are, so that matches the lore very well. They definitely don't like walk old ladies across the street or like help you take your your groceries out to your car. Yeah, I mean the lore is basically people don't uh, people Finn and don't like anything. So there you go. So uh, the only oh well, I was gonna say something about him. I don't even remember anymore. It doesn't matter. Uh, Zentos right. chosen. Zentos Inquisitor or, on Inquisitor. the other hand is a f fan freaking tastic. I can't explain to you how fantastic he is. You just have to take my word for it. Uh, he's so good. I, I think that needs to be your motto, take my word for it. It really should be. I actually, I try to project that image on the forum as well, where I don't explain <laughs> anything I say. I just, I, I'm right, deal with it. And this yeah. is one of those situations now, that... Has he always been two threshold? He's amazing. Uh, I don't know whether he has or not. Let's see. Double check, because I vaguely remember him being one threshold, but... You know, I I, Let's I can see. be wrong. No, he was a three cost. He was a three cost, two threshold, okay. three one. So only thing they changed on him was the name, right? Because he used to be a warlock inquisitor. Yes, he used to be warlock inquisitor. So yes. they changed his name to flavor him up. That's what it looks like there. Uh, Socketable major is amazing. Yeah, I mean, I would choose. I would probably choose uh, Zentos Inquisitor first pick. Uh, many many times. Oh, uh, yeah. He's an he's mm -hmm. an incredible bomb. He's probably one of the best cards in the game. Now, here's a fun thought for constructed. I don't know how often that uh, it's come up, but we should be able to socket each individual card differently, right? I would imagine so. Yeah. So what if I wanted to do two with speed, two with flight? Just just cause. You could do that if you want. Sure. So. To me, because I imagine, you know, turn three, I need to kill something. I drop down speed, kill it, uh, comes back up in my hand, turn five. But maybe I top deck my flight one, and they're like, oh my god, it's going to have speed. And then I just, like, fake him out. Well, th what what makes him good is that you're, like, you're getting multiple activations out of him. You can pump him up and get him back. Like, he's versatile, he's powerful, uh, he's card advantage. He's, he's everything you want. He's... He's a bomb in both constructed and limited, or at least in constructed. When you make him work, he's going to work extremely, extremely well for you. So, pick this one up if you find it. It's a value draft. It's a good draft. It's a bomb draft. Would it make you play blood if you opened him up like third pack? Third pack? Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, if I, it depends on what I already have. Like, mm -hmm. it, it's definitely there's a possibility like depending on how if i'm deep enough in 
one color and I'm not really splashing the second all that deeply, I can just ditch it and maybe I have like a murder or something already. Mm -hmm. I, I might do it. I mean, because he's good both early and late. It depends on what that color is and what socket I'm getting out of it. What do you think? Where is it enough to change your strategy in late in the draft? Um, maybe. I mean, because I know uh, yeah, if you actually, get Zinto, like I said, Zentos Inquisitor, I would take him pretty much every time, and I would try to fit him into a into a deck. I I really do love this guy. Because uh, the way I look at it is like, even if I'm not going to play this. I don't want any other opponent to do it, and I would hate draft him away first pick anyway. I would yeah, value I, draft I would him start, first pick anyway. I, I would start with the idea of a hate draft, but I would just end up playing him probably. <laughs> it's like, oh man, I'm totally into Sapphire. I have everything I need to make a Sapphire deck. That includes Zentoth's Inquisitor. Alright, so we got Zombie Vulture, which uh, there's not much to talk about there. And I think that actually ends our uh, our blood. Uh, yeah, we've, that is. We've been rambling for like three hours now, and we've only t covered two shards. Hey, uh, you know what? You I can edit this out. <laughs> hey, well, actually, I think you're the one who started fish hands. I don't think I did. No, mm. I I opened up that tangent dragon, and I regretted it two seconds later. I I thought well, it was going to be like the most amazing story ever, and I thought this is going to be hilarious. And I'm like, they're talking about Edward Fish Hands. I it's wish I could play hands. these cards rather than actually talk about them. Oh, well, I do too. Them. We're working on it. They're, we're we're giving people a little bit of fun and entertainment while we all pray that the engineers continue to work through the night high on Red Bull and caffeine pills. It's coming. Soon. Yes, we're skipping the 3145 flyer. Oh, they really want well, us to talk about him. Here we go. So... We got it. Oh, we're going to talk about the 5 1 for flyers? Yes. All right. No. I'll, I'll, we have I'll a find request. Some kind of flavor thing. Does he have flavor text? Read it for me. <laughs> flavor text. Uh, not all scavengers wait until their food is dead. Yeah. So, yeah. You got yeah. nothing, right? Yeah. I don't... <laughs> yeah, I got nothing on that. All right. I, I so, here's was, like, the deal. Tons of room here's the with, deal with the, really five, the 5 cost 3 1. Just like the card draw being a sapphire thing, flight is also largely a sapphire thing. So, the larger the flight creatures get the more of a penalty any other character any other color than sapphire needs to have that's why we have a 531 flight and it's awful i mean what, what are you gonna do uh right, i'll so. wait two turns to play the seven for eight eight flight crush that we saw earlier exactly <laughs> all right let's let's so, run down to some so fun Colin says we need to keep rambling he just twittered me back and uh he says we need to keep rambling because he's going to be able to watch the stream in 10 minutes. So I was almost like, I, I think we need to take a break. I need to get something to drink. But, uh, you know, it maybe it might be a good time to pause real fast and then we can start diamonds. What do you guys think? Uh, I, could use with a, I could use a bathroom break, I think. Yeah. So, All right. Yeah. That sounds like I'm... we've got to... So we're going to be up for... Yeah, let's go ahead and take 10 minutes. Come back here at... Uh... At uh, well, y'all are uh, let's, yeah, let's ten just minutes. Come back in five minutes. No, yeah. five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah, All right. Five minutes. Will be yeah, fine. Five minutes. Fine. We are taking our five minute break. Do, All right. Do, 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 and do, do. I promise I'll say like the word boobs five times when you guys get back, so that way hopefully we still have some viewers. Oh, boobs. Okay. All right. I yeah. really has that background always been a thing? Cause uh, yeah, I, good. yeah, yeah. My uh, actually, my wife put this together actually. So we, I, we're. I like what that squirrel's doing to that goblin there. That's good <laughs> stuff. We need to like. I was telling Mokog he needs to play like a um, what, what was I saying like a you know a, that game where it's like I Spy, where yes. there's something in the background, and he needs to just add like a hex character every time he does a new video. Yes, one yeah, of those three runs is dead. By the way, three runs, which sucks because those like the one on. The oh my right god! It was, it was the flavor favorites. runt too. It's the one in the center because the other two on the new art are white and they have the red eyes. But it's the one in the center that had multiple colors. He died. Poor thing. All right, five All right, minute break. Back in, back in three now, I guess. I don't know. All right.